Hi all and welcome to this sixth module of the course. In this series of videos we are going to talk about the role of vocabularies in the context of the semantic web and link data. Most of the time when we talk about vocabularies we will be referring to ontologies, which can be seen as a set of formalized and agreed terms. Ontologies usually refer to one domain, covering the concepts and relations including on it and most of the time are developed within the context of a given community uh, of experts and users. Here in the slide we see a set of examples, a set of ontologies that we will introduce in the coming videos. As we introduce in the RDF module we distinguish between the schema level and the data level in the context of semantic representation. We refer to this as well as the knowledge and data levels as we see on the slide. On the knowledge level, uh, we will have the ontologies or vocabularies that model our understanding of the domain, uh, the domain that we are working with. That include the concepts and relations and the taxonomical hierarchy relating them. On the other hand, we have the data level, in which we define the instances of the corresponding concepts and relations. We see here an example of uh, how this can uh, be represented. Uh, let's say that we have or that we are annotating the bibliographical domain, that is information about authors, works, and their related information. We could create for it a model like this, in which uh, a person, for example, is related to a work, a person is the creator of a work, and this work has a publication uh, date. Uh, so in the knowledge level, we will have the concepts person, a work, and year, and the relation is creator of and publication date. On the data level, we will have instances of these elements. Uh, we will say that, for example, Cervantes is an instance of a person, that El Quixote is a work, and that uh, 1605 is uh, its publication year. We then can relate this individual by means of the properties, by instances of the properties of our model. So we will say that Cervantes is the creator of El Quixote, and that El Quixote was published in 1605. We see here the difference between the knowledge level and the data level. So we can understand ontologies as an engineering artifact for which there are several guidelines and methodologies for building them. In general, they are composed by a set of terms and assumptions about the meaning of them in the context of the modeled domain. We will have a classification on ter of terms, such as the one we see on the right hand side of the slide, in which we are talking about uh, different types of wines and how they relate to each other. Ontologies provide then a shared, uh, a common understanding for a domain and are codified usually using uh, RDF schema that we introduced in the first video or the ontology web language, uh, which are both in both cases based on RDF. For building uh, ontologies and vocabularies, we have different tools, such as, for example, Protege, which is the most uh, used one, Neon Toolkit, Top Break Composer, and many others. So, which is the role of vocabularies or ontologies in lean data? Which are the most popular vocabularies in terms of, uh, of usage? Well, for uh, discovering that, as well as to get information about popular vocabularies, we can use uh, portals such as, for example, the Linked Open Vocabularies Portal. LOV is an ecosystem that exposes the information about more than 300 RDFS and OWL ontologies that are used in different Link Open datasets. These vocabularies are classified under different categories depending on the domain they cover um, and are described using the VOFF vocabulary, which is as well, another vocabulary for annotating the information precisely about vocabularies themselves. This is um, what um, LOV offers uh, to the user. It has information about um, uh, vocabularies and it can categorize uh, vocabularies within uh, or based on the domain they cover. So we will have uh, vocabularies for science or for web information about multimedia libraries or um, social organizations. As we see here, we have different bubbles. Each bubble represents a vocabulary and the bigger the bubble, the more used the vocabulary is. 
once we have selected our vocabulary from the many more that, um, that are on LOV, we can access uh, information about it. So we will have some metadata covering, for example, uh, the namespace URI, um, when it was last modified, or uh, statistics such as the number of classes or properties. We will have also how the vocabulary relates to other vocabularies. As we see here, we are uh, studying the FOAF vocabulary, which we'll introduce later. And um, it is a popular vocab vocabulary because it is reused by many other vocabularies as we see here. Each bubble here that we see around FOAF is uh, pointing to the FOAF vocabulary. As well, we see how uh, FOAF relate to other vocabularies. For example, in this case, we are seeing that FOAF reuses around seven vocabularies uh, from DC to uh, GEO and, and many others. Finally, we have uh, an historical information about the, uh, the evolution and versions of the vocabulary. This information is really useful when we want to know uh, how popular a vocabulary is and how useful it is for our data set. As well, we will have uh, um, vocabulary catalogs hosted by organizations. Uh, in this case, we have vocablindata.es, which is a general registry in which vocabularies are classified based on the domain. We have here tags for uh, the domain of, the, of the, the vocabularies, the domain they cover, as well as information about the license, for example here, or the language. It is hosted by the Ontological Engineering Group, and you can access it on this uh, URL. As well, we will have domain-specific catalogs. For example, this one, smartcity.lindata.es, refers to vocabularies and ontologies that uh, describe information that is useful for uh, the smart city uh, context. So we will have uh, um <coughs> uh, ontologies for buildings, for uh, weather, for uh, unit of measurement, uh, architecture and building physics, etc. And for each one of them, we will have uh, the domain, the syntax, the language, the natural language uh, they expose for the documentation, the licenses, the license, sorry, or the availability of RDF or HTML uh, representation. With this, we conclude uh, the introduction to, uh, to the role of vocabularies in the Lean Data world. We will devote the coming videos to explain some of the more popular and used vocabularies in the context of Lean Data. Thanks for watching. <laughs>